TV reveal time. What did I get? Were you right? What did you think I was gonna get? What's gonna be replacing the 65 inch TV behind me? All will be revealed up next. Hey, what's up guys, I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned in the intro, this is a TV reveal, but it is different than other TV reveals or reviews that I do throughout the year. This reveal is a TV that I purchased for myself. Now, why is that important? As a tech reviewer or YouTuber or influencer, whatever they call us these days, it's always important to see what that person that reviews tech purchases for themselves. Their environment, their use case might be very different than yours or very similar to yours. All the reviews you see me do throughout the year, each TV is judged and reviewed on its own merit, specs, and use case. But I find it fascinating when you see the person that reviews TVs or technology in general, what they choose for themselves. We're going to go through the unveiling, the unboxing, and talk a lot about why I chose the TV that I chose. I know there were a lot of different thoughts of what I would choose. The TV behind me is a 65-inch Hisense U7K. It is just temporarily here. It is mine, but it was just a placeholder for this really large apartment slash studio. So we'll go through what I chose tell you why I chose it, but I'm so glad you guys are here throughout this journey with me. Your use case, your reason for choosing your TVs might be just like mine or very different. Thank you so much for watching. guys sony a80l at 83 inches let me know in the comments are you shocked surprised disappointed what did you have me choosing as we talked about this from the very beginning of 2023 what tv i would purchase for myself as you see me move around this massive box we are going to do a quick unboxing Again, 83 inches. I chose this size as my seating position in this apartment is between 12 and 14 feet away. There with my buddy, Paulie. You've seen Paulie on the channel many times. You've also seen him in the comments. Thank you, Paulie, for your help today. As we go through the setup and unboxing, we'll make this pretty quick. Here are the detachable legs. You have three positions out wide, narrow, and then wide and high to make use of a sound bar. There's the remote and everything that comes in the box. I'll show you the different positions here. Out wide for the sound bar, narrow, which we'll be using today, and then out at the end. It is a massive TV. We'll not be utilizing those other positions. It is not a backlit remote. The legs are very premium and you have the detachable cable on the 83 inch. Now the 83 inch A80L is the only A80L that utilizes the Sony A90J Master Series chassis. So essentially body wise, chassis wise, it is an A90J. 
you can see all the different pieces that go on the back of a master series included in this tv the cable management that's how it comes packed from the screen here is the back this is how it's wrapped more cable management panels again if you've ever had a master series you're going to be familiar with the way they look from the back one of the biggest reasons why i chose the 83 inch a80l essentially it's an a90j master series utilizing the new processor which includes xr clear you can tell a master series by the speaker connections in the back you can utilize that as a separate channel channel speaker I'll be using the HTA9 center channel attachment here. You can see the plug in the back. And there's the glossy screen. From what I understand, the sizes below this one are semi-gloss matte, though I thought the 77 inch was also glossy. Love the look of this TV. I love the Master Series. I thought the A90J looked amazing. The main reason why I chose it, as I mentioned, is the A90J chassis, including the heatsink. Now, does that make it brighter than the other A80Ls? I don't believe it does. It needs the heatsink to drive it as it is 83 inches, so I imagine it's about even. But I love that it's here, whether it makes a difference or not. Showing you the different HDMI ports, again, you have the center channel attachment and the speaker connections of a Master Series. There's Paulie's thumbs. By using the styrofoam in the middle, you can actually apply the feet without laying the TV on its face. Though you will need someone else to help you, we'll be using the inside. They clip in and up, and then they screw in. Love the way the stand looks. You also have the extra cable management covering those. Legs, those legs and that cover would be used primarily if you put the feet on the outside to cover the actual legs. Showing you here without the extra cable management covers, I'll put them on. That's where the legs would be and that's where you would utilize that extra piece that goes over the leg. That's without the cable management panels. We will add them now so you can see how well Master Series actually covers everything. Boom. Love the way Master Series look. They've always looked like that since the Sony Z9D. And here you have Paulie, who is about 6'3", standing next to the 83-inch on its stand with the 65-inch U7 gay, giving you a little bit of scale. Now, the 65-inch doesn't look much smaller as it's ahead of the 83. It is a massive difference. It's also a massive difference from 83 to 77. We're going to skip the setup, as you guys have all seen this many, many times. But I did want to show you the TV off in the brightest part of the day before we go through all the picture quality. Again, glossy. It does have tough reflections. You can see everything in the room, but I love the design. I love the minimalist Sony OLED design. Very stable for a tall TV. I should mention that always, as sometimes TVs can be wobbly. It isn't very solid. Again, I have it in the most narrow position. You can see the entire room behind me. Very cognizant of why I chose this, the HTA9. We'll talk about that throughout the video as I am buying into the Sony ecosystem, using the TV as a center channel and using the HTA9 surround, four separate speakers and that sub I just showed you all together. Now, I did a video recently talking about TVs being a product of your environment. I know exactly why I purchased it and the reflections I'll be dealing with. Now, I'm used to an A80J at 77 inches in my living room at home. So I know about the reflections and I think about when I'll be here watching it. Forgive the cable management as I'll be reconnecting all this after. But I do love the back. More thick at the back, but I love the thin design of OLEDs. Back there is an HTA9 and a Panasonic U820. But want to show you the reflection handling, how the TV looks when it's off. This is why I like glossy screens. They look more premium when they are off than a matte screen, a whole matte screen that can look very cheap. 
now showing you the TV on during the same time of day. You can see as I'm further back behind the couch how the 83 inch, though it's massive, does appear rather small. It's not always as simple as moving your furniture up. Now I could do that in this apartment. It is not my home. I could slide the couches and everything up. But it's the biggest reason why I didn't choose the 77 inch A95L, though I do consider that to be the superior TV. Quantum.OLED is the future. The A95L is the best TV in the world as far as I'm concerned. But 77 inches is just way too small for me. Keep in mind, I am in the heavyweight division. It was 80 inch only and up in this room. Not the best reflection handling, it is an OLED. We're going to start with standard out of the box. This is how the TV ships. I will always show this to you. I am not interested in everyone loving certain presets or most accurate. I'm always going to be here to show everybody what these TVs can do and every preset imaginable. If you buy this TV, this is exactly what you're going to get out of the box. Sony has one of the best standard presets in the business. It is punchy, vibrant. It will always be very cool and very blue out of the box. And it will also show up more blue on camera. It is an OLED. Many of you will have it like this and leave it like this and it's absolutely fine as it is a very punchy preset. Again, accurate, vibrant, clear. You can hear me talk about the A80L clarity accuracy elegance i love that about the a90j and i love that about the a80l especially at 83. now this will also elevate for me the xr clear processing is no joke when it comes to upscaling especially for those of you that are streaming the processing is not market speak this year from Sony. For me, this elevates all of the A80L lineup as well as the A75L, which is a limited release A80L. So everything you see on this A80L is going to be on the A75L. Less sound options or not as good a sound system on that one. However, you can still use it with the extra Sony sound options hta9 and sound bars looks absolutely stunning now we're going to go through all the different presets and the settings to show you what i call flexibility of image a very special thanks to robert and wendy zon of value electronics where i purchased the sony a80l Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Let them know that Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy sent you. It's where I buy all of my AV equipment. There are perks to getting to them through me. You'll be able to use those perks to buy other accessories such as the Sony HTA9, which is amazing. Let them know that I sent you again. Very special thanks to Robert, Wendy and Leanne. love the image on this tv now i will tell you that out of all the tvs that i've had this right now is my favorite again it's my personal tv this is not a loner i will be keeping this 83 inches it is perfect in regards to screen uniformity which is saying a lot from a large wrgb oled in a gaming 12%, 15%, I've had no issues with banding, which I've had on all of my LG OLEDs at that size. It is pristine. Now with Sony, again, I love flexibility of image. Each preset looks very different from the other. Now keep in mind the Sony A95L QD OLED is using a different UI. And that will be what I think all 2024 TVs will have. So if you want that newer UI, you're going to have to go with the A95L. Now keep in mind, I purchased the A80L knowing the A95L is a better TV. It is a quantum dot OLED. It is very bright, very vibrant, very punchy, but does not fit my use case, does not fit my environment. It could be the best TV in the world. If I wanted the perfect image, I'd buy a $30,000 reference monitor, but it wouldn't fit my use case. 
Now going through the settings, I'll let you guys check those out. Now, why did I not choose the others? The other TV was a Samsung QN95C, which would have been primarily for gaming. It is an 85 inch mini LED. Love that TV, very, very bright. The other would be a 100 inch U8K, also an 85 inch TCL QM8, Sony X95L at 85 inches, Hisense UX mini LED at 85 inches. To be very honest with you guys, seeing how badly the mini LEDs were beaten in the shootout really changed my mind um, in thinking that no matter how good they are, they just cannot handle or hold a candle to the micro contrast of an OLED. Seeing the QN95C, even the 900C and the Z9K go against the OLEDs, really hard for me to ignore going forward because I would miss that micro contrast. Now, though I love the rest of Sony's lineup, the X95, the X93, and the X90, it's that micro contrast Tandem, in tandem with the XR Clear that makes all the difference for me. We'll talk about gaming later and I'll show you the game bar and being a major gamer, I also have to keep in mind how much gaming am I doing in this room? Very, very important. Do I game much here? I would be console gaming only here. My PS5 and my Series X is here. For this next demo, we will be in custom, which is the most accurate preset, and it still is very punchy and very beautiful. Now getting back into Sony and the ecosystem, I have an HTA9 system, which I did use with the U7K and the other TVs I've had here. The thing is using the acoustic glass and using the center channel option with the A80L completes that. So even TVs like the UX from Hisense that have an amazing sound system, that would disappear as soon as I would use my HTA9 or any other soundbar. While LG and Samsung are also using the center channel option, I already had the HTA9, so I'm investing in the ecosystem of their entire AV lineup, meaning their receivers would work well with here, or with the uh, A80L. But what it really came down to was picture quality. To me, the A80L is far and away the best 83 inch OLED available. The G3 might as well be the G2. There are power supply issues sometimes at the 83 inch. I've had issues with banding on my LG OLEDs at that size. I do have an 83 inch C1. We are now in a cinema preset using our good friend, Jennifer Gala. Love Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you so much for all of your content. Check out her channel, Jennifer Gala, and the HCR Super channel. Moving into the other presets, again, show you flexibility of image. But primarily for me, it will always come down to picture quality. That's why the game mode here for me is good enough. Wasn't quite good enough on the X95, X93, and X90 is you can't change the game mode much. However, the picture quality on an OLED, the A95L and the A80L makes the game mode good looking enough for me. So yes, the ecosystem important, the sound important, which I will show you soon. But primarily it's overall picture quality and the XR Clear that made this decision easy for me. Also, 83 inch is big enough. As much as I recommend 100 inch TVs to you guys, I don't keep my TVs long enough to invest in a TV that large. I don't know who would take that TV then or how would you give that TV well or even sell it. But to me, 100 inches is too large for LEDs. I'm not willing to sacrifice the micro contrast of an OLED. When I say micro contrast, guys, it's the black level that lives within the image. Clothing, materials. You just cannot get it on any LED. Not the best LED in the world does not have it. The TV looks absolutely phenomenal. Plenty bright, plenty vibrant. It looks very similar to the A80L that I tested at Value Electronics, the 77 inch. 
Now again, while it has the heat sink, the A90J does, does that mean it's a bit brighter? Perhaps. It's really just having the A90J chassis. Of course, for bragging rights, you might want to chase the heat sink. But Rob Brennan on Sony, from Sony said the heat sink doesn't do very much other than power this large panel. Though I selfishly like that it's there, if I'm being honest. What I also love about Sony's presets, it's pretty much a set it and forget it. You don't have to mess around with them much. Find a preset you like and almost anything you watch will look great. You're not going to see movies on here. I'm not going to risk copyright, guys. No matter what, I will not risk my channel for that. Take my word for it, the upscaling is phenomenal. Now, the one complaint I will say I do have other than reflection handling is I showed you the stand in the beginning. Having the stand sit back like that, meaning the legs sticking out, that means that the TV stand will always be in shot. You'll always see it where with an LG, I can bring the TV right to the edge. It's a small complaint, but I like having my TVs right to the edge. I don't want the stand that it's on to be the star of the show. Um, that's a small complaint. Other than that, the sound is amazing. Design is amazing. Picture quality, amazing. Very, very happy with it. But are you guys surprised? For those of you watching the video live for these live premieres, the whole crew out there, love you guys. That's why I leave these videos very long for you as we're down in there right now chatting away. I would love to know what you think about what I chose, why I chose it. Now, me saying the A95L is the best TV in the world, I do personally feel that way. I was one of the very first on the entire platform to review it. But the A80L for me is close enough, and that 16% size difference means the world to me. You can pull the chairs up as close as you want. It's not going to make the TV larger. Believe me, I've tried. Having an A80J at 77 inches, I'm very familiar with the size. It's amazing how my 83 inch C1 looks massive in, a, massive in a large or small home theater. But in this room, the 83 doesn't look nearly as big, but it does look amazing. Fits amazing in this room. But the clarity, the crispness of image, XR is at work, XR Clear is the real deal. Now we get into the sound portion of this shortly. I'll let you know when we start. Turn up your volume, please. You'll hear the TV speakers first, then the HTA9. We'll show you some SDR again. Punchy, vibrant, crystal clear. I have no problems with motion from Sony TVs. And you know you really like something when you leave and come back and you're kind of looking at it like a little kid looking back at his bicycle. You're like, wow, I love that. Love the way it looks. Colors are fantastic. Now, before we go into the sound portion, I'm going to jump into Vivid here for you Vivid fans to show you how bright the A80L gets. As we get to the sound portion, this will be from Jennifer. Just turn up your volume and then I'll see you after. Very vivid, very bright. The blacks are amazing. Obviously, it's an OLED. Absolutely love this TV. Look how beautiful that is. Now, I'll say sorry in advance for how loud the sound will be. Again, you'll hear the speakers from the TV first, and then you'll hear the HTA9. That looks amazing. And that's coming up right now. Or now. <laughs>
again sorry for how loud that was the hta9 can never really i can never really show you or have you hear how amazing that sounds but hopefully you got a grasp of the difference the audio is excellent on the aadl alone and obviously much better using it as a center channel with the hta9 going into gaming i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this i will actually do a separate video on it to me, as much as I'm happy Sony put in the game bar, it is anemic at best. I don't even really use it other than VRR on and then this black frame insertion, which I don't use because I can actually see the, you know, the flickering in and out. It's distracting to me. I don't use the crosshair. So for me, I'm glad it's here. Uh, they definitely need to make it better for next year, which they have done with the A95L. Looking quickly at Spider-Man 2, you can see how clear and gorgeous it is. Here I am showing you the black frame insertion, which does help with motion, but again, the flickering to me is too distracting for me to actually be able to use it. I'm going to show you the game mode. Now, already with Sony, I don't love that they lock me into game mode. You can jump out of VRR to move out of game mode, so you can go into standard and the other presets. However, you are limited to one game mode. There isn't a standard RPG or FPS. You will find that on the A95L. Don't love that. I also don't love that advanced contrast is gone in the game bar as well as black adjust. You'll see a black adjust here, but it's not the same as the one that's on uh, the regular presets, which I do like. And the HDR tone mapping, obviously on and off does make a difference, but brightness preferred versus gradation, not a big difference. That's a knock there. And also live color doesn't make much of a difference in gaming. It used to. Keep in mind, everything is disabled in terms to give you uh, the best input lag and latency. Black stabilizer just increases it so you can see your enemies. I never use that. But here's what I'll say to you. The game mode is beautiful on its own. But if it was not an OLED and it was a mini LED, I would really struggle with these limitations, which is why I did not choose the X90, X95, or the X93. I'm good enough without HGIG. I don't use that often. I use it on LG when it is um, being used properly or when it's supported, I should say. So I'm fine without it. Dolby Vision Gaming doesn't mean anything to me, though it is here. You would still have to jump out of uh, game mode for it, not important to me. The picture quality, however, is beautiful, and that's what I'm choosing. Smooth gradation is also something you can pick on Sony TVs, which is not available on other TVs, which would help you with banding, though this panel is very clean. Reality creation, you can also max on uh, this generation of processor, where typically if you maxed it, you'd have so much in terms of artifacting, it would create aliasing versus reducing it. Now reality creation does act as an anti-aliasing. You can use it almost max and it'll clean up the image nicely if you want to use it. XR clear is not really enabled during gameplay. So I would love to see an XR clear uh, game mode, however, their upscaling is still fantastic and is being used here, but XR isn't specifically being used here. I want to clarify that, but I would love an XR clear game mode. Again, reality creation, I never really use it, but I will be utilizing it pretty much on auto here. Love the way the game mode looks and for me, good enough. Now, the other companies are offering 144 hertz, which I've tried on Samsung and on Hisense. That is, to me, not worth chasing. 120 hertz is fantastic, even on PC. 4K 144, I've gamed on it. I don't feel a massive difference. I do feel a huge difference from 60 to 120. 120 to 144 isn't worth it to me. If it hurts the picture quality or I have dropouts like I had on the QN95C or on the S95C. So I'm good at 4K 120, very, very bright, beautiful image. I just wish there was more flexibility of image in game mode, but I'm very, very happy with it. All right, guys, I am Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for hanging in here during this long video. I think it looks amazing. What do you think about my choice? Were you surprised? Are you disappointed? Let me know. 
I love the TV. I couldn't be happier with it in all aspects. And with the Sony ecosystem, I feel like I have my whole home theater in this apartment, which many of you have a house or an apartment like the environment that I'm in. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Brian from Brian's Tech Therapy. Love you guys. Take care.